Hello, my name is Jack. Recently, I made a bunch of videos on my channel called Welcome to Kingdom Hearts. These videos were a series of 15 to 20 minute videos that summed up the entire Kingdom Hearts series for people who were new to the series and even for old fans who just wanted to relive the adventure. Now, yeah, the videos are quite long altogether, and some of them, like Chain of Memories, just weren't done that well. Other videos, like 358 slash 2 days, were pretty good as well, um, though, to sort of make up for it. But either way, I think it would be much easier for some people if I just summed up the entire Kingdom Hearts series into one video in a nutshell. Sort of, a bit shorter, just with me explaining it, rather than having you see clips of the whole series thrown together in edited ways that don't entirely add up for some people and might need a bit of further exposition. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So this is going to be the entire Kingdom Hearts series in one video in as few takes as possible. Bear with me. I apologise in advance, I am bound to stutter. Our story begins with a young boy called Sora, about 14, living with his two best friends, Riku and Kairi. The three of them live on Destiny Islands. They all want to get out and seek adventure. They want to see other worlds together. So they prepare, to, they prepare a raft to leave and see other worlds. But this goes awry when there's a storm and it collapses their islands into nothing and sucks it away and everyone goes missing. Sora wakes up in a strange world called Traverse Town, where he goes looking around and finds himself with a strange weapon called the Keyblade. And uh, he eventually runs into a couple of guys who explain everything to him. These guys are the cast from various Final Fantasy games. That's the thing about Kingdom Hearts, they have a bunch of Final Fantasy cameos. Have fun. They explain that the researcher of their world, Hollow Bastion, which was formerly known as Radiant Garden before its downfall, he fell to darkness. His name is Ansem, and he started mixing about and cause creating these horrible monsters known as Heartless. They don't have hearts, so they go around stealing other people's hearts. That's not nice. They're born from the darkness in people's hearts, which is going to make them pretty hard to eradicate because darkness is in everybody's heart. So, Sora's job as the Keyblade Master is to go and defeat the Heartless. The Keyblade is a special weapon of light chosen to destroy the Heartless. Now, every world has a heart, and as they're the Heartless, you can imagine, they are after the heart of these worlds. There are tons of worlds throughout the entire adventure, and all the worlds are Disney movies. That's the other thing about Kingdom Hearts. They have Disney worlds. Have fun. So, Sora's quest throughout the world is looking for his friends, hopping from world to world, destroying the Heartless before they can reach the heart of the world, which looks like a keyhole. That's why he's got a Keyblade. The Keyblade is shaped like a key because it locks the heart of the world and seals away from the Heartless Forever so they can't get it. In your face. Joining him on his quest are Donald and Goofy who are looking for their king, King Mickey. He's the king of their world and he's gone missing because he's left to try and solve the problem in his own way. However, we won't find out what that is till later. Meanwhile, Sora found Riku. Yay, but he's siding with the Heartless. Oh, the reason for this is Maleficent. Maleficent is one of the main villains who conquered Radiant Garden and turned it into Hollow Bastion. She leads an army of Heartless along with the other Disney villains who are conspiring together to kidnap Disney princesses. Why? Because there are seven specific princesses known as the Princesses of Heart. When you gather all seven princesses of heart together, they unlock a special door, a special keyhole known as Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is a source of power and knowledge. Maleficent tricks Riku into thinking that Sora doesn't care about him anymore, so that she can trick him into causing mischief and getting all the princesses together for her. It later turns out that Riku is the real Keyblade Master, so for a moment Donald and Goofy decide to follow him because their specific instructions were to follow the Keyblade Master, but then they decide, nah, Sora's our friend so we'll follow him instead. Too bad for Riku who eventually succumbs to darkness. Using the power of Heartless too much weakens his heart and Ansem steps in and takes control. He possesses Riku and tries to use him with a special Keyblade created of the Princess's hearts to unlock Maleficent's heart which ends up destroying her, and then uh, to unlock Sora's heart because within Sora lies Kairi. Kairi's heart was with Sora all the time. So, of course, Sora defeats Riku and then decides to do the noble thing and sacrifices himself. This destroys the Keyblade, giving all the princesses back their hearts while Kairi is resurrected. But Sora's gone. Too bad. But when Sora lost his heart, as you can imagine, he turned into a Heartless. And Kairi found the Heartless and then used her power as a Princess of Light accidentally to bring Sora back to normal. Together, Sora, Donald and Goofy follow Ansem through the keyhole towards the end of the world, a collection of the worlds that were scattered and swallowed up and destroyed by the Heartless. By defeating Ansem, Sora restores all the worlds back to normal so that everyone can go home, including Kairi. But Sora has to remain behind because Riku was trapped on the other side of the door to darkness. Basically, in the Kingdom Hearts universe, there are two realms, a realm of light and a realm of darkness. The realm of darkness is where all the Heartless come from. The realm of light is the normal place where everyone lives in the same place. You see, after being possessed by Ansem, Riku is kicked out and left in the realm of darkness to rot because Ansem is mean. And as for Mickey, he turns out to be on the realm of darkness because he went in there looking for a special keyblade so that with it and Sora on the other side with their specific specific keyblade they could lock the door to darkness forever because the door to darkness can only be passed through by people who belong in the realm of darkness so Riku and Mickey are stuck on the other side and Sora Donald and Goofy are going to have to go on another quest to find them after they lock the door to darkness meanwhile Kairi has to go home so Sora and Riku have to say goodbye for now apparently connecting the realm of darkness to the realm of light just like the door to darkness is a door to light of course the door to light can be passed through by people from the realm of light this can 
can get Riku and Mickey back. But Sora, Donald and Goofy are going to have to find that, aren't they? So they begin their quest and eventually find a castle. A castle that is run by people in black coats. And these people in black coats lead him further on, telling him that if, they keep, if he keeps going, he'll find a friend. As they're going through, they start to lose their memories, because that's the thing about Castle Oblivion. It races your memories as you go further. But at the same time, Sora starts gaining new memories of a friend he didn't know he had called Namine. Eventually, he finds out all these memories were fake. Namine is actually a special witch who has the power to meddle with his memories. And meddling with his memories causes him to forget people like Kairi. So at the very end, Sora's memories are all messed up. He's defeated about half the men in the Black Cloats, who were apparently trying to overthrow an organization which they come from. And this will be explained later. But they are betrayed by one of their own called Axel. Axel's really cool. Sora, Donald and Goofy ask Namine, can you put our memories back together? And Namine says, sure, I didn't mean to do it in the first place. I was being made to by the organization because she's actually a very nice girl. Yay. While all this is happening in the basement of the castle, Riku wakes up. He was led here by Diz, a guy in a red cloak who apparently has a grudge against this organization and Ansem. And he helps Riku go forward and fight the darkness within him as Ansem is still lurking inside his heart in a dark, evil form, trying to possess him some more. But Riku says no, so he beats Ansem. And Mickey helps him along the way because Mickey eventually finds his way out as well. And together they decide we're going to try and get rid of Ansem once and for all. We can't have him inhibiting Riku's heart, so Riku decides to go on a quest of self purveyance and protect Sora while he sleeps and all that stuff. It doesn't really matter. He's okay. That's all you need to know. So when a person becomes a heartless, what happens to their mind and spirit? It turns out that lives on in a form known as a nobody. A nobody is an empty being that does not deserve to exist. It has no heart and no feelings. So they are basically people who have no imagination or creativity whatsoever. And wouldn't you know it, there's a whole organization of them, 13 exactly, and the 13th member is a guy called Roxas. Now every organization member takes their name, scrambles it around and adds an X. Roxas is Sora's nobody. When Sora lost his heart after he sacrificed himself for Kairi, Roxas was born. Guess what this organization want? That's right, they want Kingdom Hearts. And to get it, they need Roxas. By defeating the Heartless with his Keyblade, Roxas releases the hearts that they've captured, and they all weave together to form a special artificial Kingdom Hearts that the leader of the organization, 13, wants. And with this Kingdom Hearts, the nobodies can finally become whole people back again, you know, back to normal and all that. They're really happy with that. They don't like being nobodies. Roxas befriends Axel. The two of them are best friends and hang out together on the clock tower eating ice cream after a successful mission. They really, really love ice cream. Alongside them is their friend Gion, a girl who also has the power of the Keyblade. She's the 14th member of Organization 13, but the reason it's not called Organization 13 is because she's not actually a nobody. She's a replica of Roxas that's kind of faulty, has all these different memories and stuff inside her. In fact, she's inhibiting Sora's process of returning back to normal. Normal. With all of Sora's memories inside her, Sora can't wake up. Namine and Riku realise this, so Riku has to sort of sort it out. But Gion decides, you know what, I'm going to help Sora. I'm going to do the right thing. And because of this, Roxas and Axel experience a bit of heartbreak for people without hearts, which is quite sad. So Gion sacrifices herself in a battle with Roxas and convinces him to go back and fix Kingdom Hearts so that Xemnas can't have it. Xemnas is the leader of organisation. Take out the X, scramble the letters, you have Ansem. That's right, the Ansem that Sora and the gang fought in Kingdom Hearts 1 was a heartless, and his nobody form is the leader of organisation 13. He is also after Kingdom Hearts, but is he really wanting to become whole? We'll find out later. Riku fights Roxas and is forced to use Ansem's power inside his heart in order to get him back, but this causes him to look like Ansem for quite a while. Who knows when it will turn back, but for now Riku looks like Ansem. And he uses this power to help Sora wake up by bringing Roxas to him. Roxas then goes with Sora and Sora's happy, he gets his memories back. Sora wakes up after a whole year of being asleep. Unfortunately, this results in the sacrifice of both Gion and Roxas, and since Gion was a replica made of memories, when she's destroyed, all memories of her cease to exist, so nobody even remembers members her, which is really sad. And this leaves Axel completely friendless. He eventually goes rogue from the organization and decides to try and find a way to turn Sora into a heartless so he can get his best buddy back. Before Roxas returned to Sora, Diz shifted around with his memories and made him think he was an ordinary boy, living in an artificial twilight town, where he lived with his best friends, Hainer, Pence and Olette. However, when Sora wakes up, he is in the real twilight town where he meets the real Hainer, Pence and Olette. They have no idea who Roxas is because they're not the digital versions. But from within Sora, Roxas feels sad that he's saying goodbye to friends he never had, which is really depressing. But more importantly, King Mickey is back. Sora and the gang run into him and they don't really get any answers, so they decide to go to Yen Sid, Mickey's master. And when they run into Yen Sid, Yen Sid explains everything about Organization 13, says you gotta stop this, and Sora says okay. Meanwhile, Hollow Bastion is looking swanky as the guys from Final Fantasy start to rebuild it. Sora decides to help out as Organization 13 and Maleficent, who 
has been revived through the power of memories and has Pete on her side gathering more heartless for her are up to no good in trying to stop them. Sora starts hopping from world to world again, albeit a little more pointlessly this time. Meanwhile, Axel tries to kidnap Kairi but she finds her way to Twilight Town where she befriends the trio but unfortunately is kidnapped by Axel anyway. Good work guys. In the meantime, Hollow Bastion is under attack by an army of heartless sent out by Organization 13. To defend the world and his friends, Sora fights against them and destroys them all. But then it turns out that the organization were using him the whole time by destroying the heartless just like Roxas and Gion, he is actually gathering more hearts to suit their needs. This puts Sora in a bit of a pickle because if he can't fight the heartless then he can't help his friends but if he does fight the heartless he's helping Organization 13. What to do? It then turns out Ansem, the rumor of the formerly named Radiant Garden, is in fact a good guy and the guy who's been causing all the havoc and they know as Ansem was actually Ansem's top apprentice Xehanort. Xehanort stole Ansem's name to discredit him and carried out illegal experiments with the heart and darkness. This is what caused all the events leading up till now so Xehanort is the real bad guy and Ansem and Xemnas, they're not Ansem. The real Ansem is Diz and he's been plotting his revenge to get back at Xehanor ever since. Meanwhile, Sora, Donald and Goofy are left a couple of clues in a box that Sora thinks might be from Riku and in the box is ice cream and a picture of the gang from Twilight Town. This leads him to think that maybe in order to find Organization 13, they're going to have to go to Twilight Town. Before we go any further, I'm going to put a hold on their adventure to explain some more backstory. Years and years and years ago, there was a wise and powerful and old Master Xehanort. He was a Keyblade Master who had a very keen interest in darkness and the hearts. You can sort of see where this is going. He studied the lore of an ancient time, centuries ago, when there were Keyblade Masters everywhere. These Keyblade Masters were divided against each other, fighting for the light known as Kingdom Hearts. Originally, all the worlds were just one big world, but when everyone fought against each other for the power of Kingdom Hearts to steal it for themselves, darkness was born and it separated the worlds from each other. The Keyblade is a very special weapon that safeguarded Kingdom Hearts. That's what all the Keyblade wielders were fighting for, so that they could they could obtain Kingdom Hearts for themselves. Master Xehanort thinks, you know what, I want a Keyblade for myself so that I can start a Keyblade War again and this time we'll see what happens. That's exactly how insane and crazy this guy is. His first thought is, I'm too old for this, I need a younger body to accumulate and use in order to see my plans come to fruition. He takes under his wing an apprentice called Ventus, uh, and Ventus looks a lot like Roxas, doesn't he? Go fig. Anyway, he plans to use Ventus to possess him and control his body for the rest of his life, but it turns out, you know, Ventus isn't too good for that, so he decides to use Ventus instead for the Keyblade. Unfortunately, Ventus lacks the capacity to do this, so he decides to rip the darkness out of Ventus' heart forcefully and creates a new being called Vanitas. And Vanitas is too powerful, so Ventus starts to die. He leaves Ventus on Destiny Islands, but at this point, Sora is born. Sora's newborn heart links with Ventus's and saves him, rebuilding him. Xehanort leaves Ventus in the care of his old friend Ericus. Ericus has two pupils of his own, a young man called Terra and a young woman called Aqua. And Xehanort sees great potential in Terra to become his new vessel instead. A couple of years later, and Ventus and Terra are best friends, with Aqua being a great supporter of the group. Unfortunately, evil things are afoot as Vanitas spawns these evil monsters known as the Unversed. They're negative, fledging emotions. And he sends these unversed into various worlds causing havoc in order to lure away Terra and Aqua and Ventus and, you know, get them separated. During this course, Vanitas starts to aggravate Ventus and get him to grow stronger and stronger. Meanwhile, Xehanort lures Terra over to his side, pretending to be his friend. While the three friends believe in their friendship, they start to grow apart as they don't really see much of each other lately. And then later, Terra finds himself on Destiny Island. I completely forgot! The reason Sora got his Keyblade back after Riku stole it, proving to himself to be the real wielder, was the fact that Sora has a much stronger heart than Riku. So the Keyblade decided, you know what Riku, you might be my real master, but I'm choosing Sora instead. Sora proved himself to be the better master, and that's how Sora still has the Keyblade. Sorry I completely forgot about that, no worries, let's move on. On the subject of Keyblades, Terra finds Riku and Sora on Destiny Islands, and he thinks Riku has the potential to become a Keyblade master. So he decides to perform this ritual with Riku that lets Riku use the Keyblade once he's ready. And that's how Riku was chosen by the Keyblade later in Kingdom Hearts 1, although Riku chose Darkness. Because Riku chose the forces of Darkness, the Keyblade passed its decision on to Sora. That's why Sora became the wielder back in Kingdom Hearts 1. Again, sorry for forgetting all about that. Then Aqua comes along and she sees the two boys and thinks, you know, I think these two have the potential to become Keyblade Masters. She sees that Riku's already gotten a Keyblade and thinks, hmm, I don't think more than one Keyblade is necessary here. Master Xehanort then reveals to Ventus the truth about his past. Ventus confronts Ericus about it and Ericus tries to destroy Ven. Terra shows up, again being led by Master Xehanort, and he protects Ventus with the power of darkness. He uses the darkness to destroy Ericus. And as Ericus is dying apologetically, 
late Master Xehanort puts him down once and for all. He then scolds a grieving Terra, proving his true dark nature and destroys his homeworld so that Terra has no home to return to. He then leaves Terra with a message to come to the Keyblade graveyard if he wants to save his friends. Meanwhile, Vanitas runs into Ven and Vanitas tells him the exact same thing, come to the Keyblade graveyard if you don't want your friends to get hurt. Throughout their adventure, King Mickey just received Keyblade training from Master Yen Sid. Once he heard about the Unversed, King Mickey just hopped off and started to help the three out on their adventures. He befriends Aqua and Ventus and uh, later Aqua comes across Mickey floating in the realms between after an encounter with Xehanort. She takes him back to Yen Sid who reveals what just happened to Ericus and that the two friends of hers are heading to the Keyblade graveyard, exactly where Master Xehanort wants them to go. Aqua then also goes over there to try and stop everything from going wrong. During a huge battle where the three friends fight Master Xehanort and Vanitas, Brague shows up and fights Aqua. Brague was an accomplice of Xehanort's, a rogue who was helping him out with his plans who, for a reason we don't know yet, and during a battle with Terra he lost an eye and got a scar on his cheek. Brague later went on to become the nobody we know as Zigbar in Kingdom Hearts 2. He is rank 2 in the organisation. But Brague was only there to buy time for Xehanort so that he could have some alone time with Terra where he fought Terra and forced him to draw out his darkness in order to defeat Xehanort. Meanwhile Vanitas gets the jump on Aqua, knocking her out cold. Before he can put an end to her altogether, Ventus steps in and saves the day. And unfortunately this is exactly what Master Xehanort wanted. In order to create the Keyblade, his ultimate goal so that he can recreate the Keyblade War and get Kingdom Hearts, he needs Ventus and Vanitas to fight. When they fight they will fuse together and become the Keyblade. Unfortunately Ventus falls for it and fights Vanitas in order to protect Aqua. A noble act but it causes the Keyblade to be forged in the end, with Vanitas being the one in command. Mickey shows up and helps Aqua. The two of them fight alongside each other as they defeat Vanitas, which is Vanitas possessing Ventus wielding the Keyblade, and through the power of friendship, no seriously, they'd manage to destroy the ultimate weapon, and so the Keyblade is utterly eradicated. Meanwhile, up top, Xehanort succeeds in possessing Terra, and so he becomes Terranort, as most fans like to dub him. But Terra's armour gains a mind of its own as it seeks to stop Xehanort at all costs, with Terra's last lingering will. So it knocks Ter Terranort into submission, and the Keyblade's explosion sends him far away to goodness knows where. But it turns out the Keyblade is not destroyed altogether. Ventus faces off against Vanitas inside Ventus' heart, and the two of them clash in combat as Vanitas tries to finish the Keyblade and join, rejoin their union altogether, and Ventus wants to destroy the Keyblade and Vanitas. He knows this will destroy his own heart, but he'll do anything to save his friends. What a noble lad. Of course, Ventus comes out the victor, and so he is utterly destroyed. He obliterates his own heart to destroy the Keyblade and stop Xehanort once and for all. But his heart still finds its way back into Sora's heart when Sora was just a four-year-old lad, and so he decides to rest with Sora for a while, leaving the fragments of his heart inside Sora, so that Ven becomes nothing more than a sleeping body. Aqua takes him to their homeworld, finding it all destroyed, and uses a trick that Ericus taught her to seal away the land so that nobody could ever find its secrets because it is a refuge for Keyblade wielders. And so it becomes Castle Oblivion later on in the series, and Ventus is left sleeping in there somewhere waiting for Aqua to return in order to bring him back to life somehow. They'll find out eventually. Meanwhile, Aqua finds Terranor and is convinced that Terra is still in there somewhere, so she fights with Xehanort possessing Terra, and in the end, she manages to call out Terra's heart inside Xehanort's body. She fights him into submission, and Terra's will uh, fights on with from within, and he locks away his own heart. Eventually, he starts to sink into darkness, however. Aqua dives after him, desperate to save her friend, but she realises she is unable to save them both, so she sends Terranor up to the Realm of Light where he'll be safe. He wakes up with only the name Xehanort in his memory. He's apparently suffered amnesia, and Amson the Wise takes him in, and he becomes Ansem's apprentice, although Brague suggests that perhaps he never lost his memories. Meanwhile, Aqua is trapped in the realm of darkness with no hope of escape, but she continues to fight on in the hopes that she might make it out someday. Back to Sora's adventure. So they head to Twilight Town and find Hainer Pensinolette trying to get into the old mansion where they think there might be an alternate Twilight Town. Due to evidence that Sora's carrying on him, they think that there must be a second Twilight Town, and Sora associates this with Roxas. With Mickey's help, they sneak in and find an old computer. They access it and manage to find their way into the alternate Twilight Town. Through the alternate Twilight Town, they find a portal which leads into an in-between realm. The moment they get in, they're attacked by nobodies. As they start to get overwhelmed by the numbers, Axel steps in to help them out. Axel sacrifices himself in a kamikaze attack that destroys all the nobodies. As he lies fading on the floor, he apologises to Sora for everything he did to Kairi and the others. He explains that Kairi's been captured and held in the dungeon by the organisation, and he opens a portal so that Roxas, I mean Sora, can get into the organisation's stronghold. They arrive in the organisation's world, where Roxas and Sora end up clashing when Roxas appears all of a sudden. Sora comes out the victor, and as Roxas admits that Sora is the better of the two of them, he meets with Axel's fading presence for a one last conversation as the two friends say goodbye to each other.
Meanwhile, in the organization's stronghold, Namine and Riku help Kairi to escape the jail cell as Sora and the gang approach the castle and invade it. They fight their way through the castle, overcoming Zigbur, Luxord, and Syax, destroying those three members of the organization until Zemis is the only one left. Mickey finds Diz, who is in fact Ansem the Wise all along, and Ansem tries to use his machine to encode Kingdom Hearts as data to destroy Zemnis' plans altogether. In the end, the machine self destructs because hearts are far too complicated and complex to be encoded as data. The resulting explosion turns Riku back to normal into a regular teenage boy. And as for Ansem, he's disappeared and presumed dead, but it turns out he was sent to the Realm of Darkness where he meets up with Aqua and the two of them discuss everything that's happened so far, although Ansem has lost a lot of his memories. So back in the organization's world, Sora, Riku and the gang all take on Zemnis, and in a huge climactic battle where Zemnis proves to be a formidable opponent, Sora and Riku are left stranded in the Realm of Darkness. Had they waited a second longer, maybe they would have run into Ansem and Aqua, but as luck would have it, that doesn't happen. As they're sitting there, a letter washes up next to them. Sora reads it, and it's a letter from Kairi that she wrote to him at the very beginning of the game. Just before their eyes, the door to light appears. The two walk through it and end up back on Destiny Islands, reunited amongst all their friends. But it turns out the fight isn't over yet. Yen Sid reveals to Mickey that when a Heartless and a Nobody are destroyed, then the real person will return to normal as a complete being. And this includes Xehanort. So Xehanort is going to return, along with many of the other members of the organization. So, Sora and Riku are called to Yen Sid's tower in order for the Mark of Mastery exam. He decides it's time for more Keyblade Masters to step forward in order to combat this new threat. What will happen next? Find out in Dream Drop Distance for the 3DS. But since many people can't afford or don't want a 3DS, I will just cover this game as well. Yen said uses his powers to send the boys back in time to the point when they first became Keyblade Masters so they can relearn the skills that they self-taught themselves. Their task in this unique Mark of Mastery exam is to reawaken the seven sleeping worlds, because when the worlds were swallowed up in the very first game, some worlds were not fully restored and fell into a sleep, a stupor, a coma, in world form. So that's what Sora and Riku are going to do, they're going to reawaken these worlds and to do so they need to go to Destiny Islands when it was swallowed by darkness. Destiny Islands is one of the sleeping worlds, so they reawaken Destiny Islands and at the same time they move on to the other worlds. However, things don't seem to go quite as planned as Sora and Riku are almost immediately split up and they find themselves falling asleep every now and then and when Sora's asleep, Riku's awake, but when Riku's asleep, Sora's awake. And worse than that, they can't even reunite when one of them is awake because the other one is in a parallel version of the world that they are in. There are two different versions of each world, completely the exact same alongside each other. And as they later find out, one of them, the one Riku is in, is in fact a dream. So if one of the versions of the world is a dream, then what does that mean for Sora and Riku? Why are they split up and separate? As it turns out, back when they were on Destiny Islands, they saw a man in a brown robe. The same brown robe man that was in fact Xehanort's heartless, Ansem, from the first game, back when he was nothing but a heart with no bodily form. So Riku, sensing that something was wrong, dove straight into Sora's dreams and became a dream eater. Just to clarify, in the world of the sleeping worlds there are monsters of their own, not like Heartless or Nobodies, these are called Dream Eaters, they're special, fancy, weird creatures that live in the dreams and they are the good Dream Eaters and the bad Dream Eaters. You fight alongside the good Dream Eaters and against the bad Dream Eaters, there you go. So without even knowing it, Riku has become a Dream Eater that defends Sora when Sora falls asleep in his dreams. Why does Sora keep falling asleep, you might ask? Because in fact, the organization are back at work. The organization? Yup, the organization. As they progress their way through their quest and complete their task, they keep running into these guys in black cloaks who are blast from the past. Ansem, Zemnis, and a younger version of Xehanort. You see, Xehanort had a lot of foresight, and he had a feeling that the Keyblade wielders would at some point want to enter the Sleeping Worlds. So he made sure that his heart form, the robed guy, was there at the very beginning of Destiny Islands when it fell to darkness, so that if they tried to go back in time and do the technique, which they did, not knowing it was for the Martial Mastery exam, but knowing that at some point they might want to enter the Sleeping Worlds, he took the precaution of having his heart form there so that he could hijack them, take their bodies away while they were sleeping in the Sleeping Worlds, because they had to fall asleep to enter the Sleeping Worlds, and uh, he hijacked them and takes them away for his plans and yeah we'll find out more about that later don't worry about it look i know it's complicated but bear with me okay it gets better xehanort utilized his own version of time travel which in order to do you need to sacrifice your body which is why that version is nothing more than a heart just a robe which is why he needed to s capture riku in order to gain a body of his own later on and for a while but yeah so he went back in time to the time of his youth because in order to go back in time you need to have a version of yourself there at the destination point he then passed on his powers and an objective to his younger self. His younger self had to use these powers to travel around through time, gathering up all the different versions of Xehanort throughout time into this one place so that he could rebuild Organization 13. And with this new Organization 13, I guess they hoped they could use the Princess of Light or the original organization for the sake of recreating the Keyblade and finally achieving his goal. But because of Sora's interference and destroying his plans, they've had to come up with a few new ideas. And they've come up with a really despicable one.
Zenus's original plan was to use the nobodies of Organization 13 and fill them all with the same heart and mind using the power of Kingdom Hearts and turn them all into Xehanort. He wanted 13 Xehanorts, 13 Seekers of Darkness, 13 Hearts of Pure Darkness to fight with 7 Keyblade wielders, 7 Hearts of Light, in order to create a brand new Keyblade. That's been Xehanort's plan all along. But there's still one member short of 13 and that's where Sora comes in. They want to use Sora, put him into a stupor, by dragging him through the worlds of dreams and sleep till his heart falls completely completely into darkness. Then they can hijack that heart and fill it with Xehanort as well, turning him into the 13th Xehanort. Throughout all of this, Lee will cut back on Radiant Garden because his heartless and nobody had been destroyed. He reawakens as a normal person along with a bunch of the other members of the organization, except for Brague and Isa. Lee goes looking for them but can't find them anywhere. He decides to travel to Yen Sid, helping Mickey out against a little Maleficent attack in order to gain the power, spoiler alert, to use the Keyblade. And then Lee shows up to help Riku in the final fight against Xehanort, as Xehanort appears and reveals his plan to them all, and he tries to turn Sora into the 13th vessel, it doesn't work out. But it is shown that Isa and Brig are going to be the other vessels, however, a lot of the members of the organisation are unknown for the moment. The Xehanorts run out of time and are forced to leave, but Xehanort warns them that the day is coming when they will refight and reforge the Keyblade, and when that time comes they will meet in the Keyblade Graveyard. Stay tuned for Kingdom Hearts 3. In the meantime, Riku has to wake up Sora's sleeping heart. He travels into his heart and finds Ansem the Wise, and the contents of Ansem's research, which he bequeathed to Riku, saying now Sora is waking up. They, f they wake up, Riku is dubbed the new Keyblade Master, and Lee finally summons the Keyblade, which is pretty darn hilarious actually. But I just couldn't get mine to materialize. Must be in the snap of the wrist or something. Oh. Really? Psst, spoiler alert. Yen said trains Kairi to use the Keyblade for Kingdom Hearts 3. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, you might have picked this up, but Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't out yet. But when it does come out, it will conclude the Xehanort saga and wrap up the Kingdom Hearts story so far altogether. So fingers crossed for whenever it comes out on whatever system that it will be a success. Hopefully it will be, probably will be, who knows, but that will finish it all together. But so far, that's it. That's me summed up the entire Kingdom Hearts series. You're welcome. I'll put some links in the description to some good Kingdom Hearts websites. They can help sort of fill in the blanks for anyone who didn't quite catch it. And send me a message if you have any questions. I know a lot about the Kingdom Hearts series. I'm a huge fan in case you haven't noticed, so I know a lot. So um, uh, it was great doing this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, bye.